kind of strange that it's a notoriously hard class, Calculus 2, and Calculus 1, 2, and 3 typically always use the same book. But Calc 2, for some reason, is just a little bit harder. These are notes that are really, really old, and in this video, I just thought I would just show you some of these notes so you can see some of the stuff that's covered in a Calculus 2 course. Let's just open it up and see what we find. These are really, really old. Exam 1, Brief Trig Review, Week 1. So that's like the thing that maybe I used to do at the beginning of Calc 2. I don't think uh, that I've done that in recent times, mainly due to time constraints. Let's take a look at this package here. 8.3 trigonometric integrals. So this is something that when I took Calc 2, I refuse to memorize the things that are written in these notes. And if you do that, what happens is you end up working you know, extra hard. So here's some useful identities. So if you're taking Calc 2 or if you're thinking about taking Calc 2, these are identities that you should memorize. Okay, so I know that a lot of people, including myself, are like anti-memorization, or at least I used to be, but these are ones you should know. For example, sine squared plus cosine squared is one. Absolutely vital. I always joke that you can fail trig, but you'll know that identity. And then this one here, cosine squared x is one plus cosine two x over two, and sine squared x is one minus cosine two x over two. So these are very different, right? And the cosine has the plus, the sine has the minus. Likewise, tan squared x plus one is secant squared. That's also one that you definitely want to know. And you might say, well, you can derive it from this one. Yeah, you can, but you really want to just memorize it because it just makes it so much easier. So the first key rule that you should know when you're learning about trigonometric integrals is integrals of powers of sine and cosine. For example, here we have sine to the fourth of x times cosine cubed of x and we're integrating with respect to x. So if the power of sine is odd, you save a sine and then let u be the other trig function, which in this case is cosine. If the power of cosine is odd, save a copy of cosine. So here it just says, save one of the factors of the power of the odd one. So for example here, uh, in this example, we have sine to the fourth uh, of x and then cosine cubed of x dx. So cosine is being raised to a three, which you can barely read because these are my notes, right? These aren't really meant for other people. So you save a copy of the cosine. By the way, if both powers are even, what you want to do is you want to use these identities here and then just convert everything to cosine. So if you had like cosine to the fourth power, you would break it up and write it as cosine squared, cosine squared, and then just use this identity and multiply it out and then just go from there. But you can see here in this example, Basically, we save a copy of the cosine. See, you have cosine x dx. That came from here, right? Because this is cosine cubed. This is cosine squared times cosine, which is cosine cubed, right? So we save the cosine. That means u is going to be our sine. So that means we have to get rid of this cosine squared. Well, cosine squared is 1 minus the other one squared, so 1 minus sine squared. And so now we're in a position to make our substitution, right? We can let u be sine x. So du is cosine x dx, and then we go from there and we can finish like a pro, boom, and we get the correct answer. So really, really powerful technique, whereas if you didn't have any guidance, like if you didn't know to save a copy of the one that's being raised to an odd power, um, it could be pretty bad. Let's turn the page, see what else we have. Just another example, so this might help you too. Like if you're a calculus teacher, you can kind of like see how I did it. Just try to keep the writing to a minimum on the board and just little memory tricks like saving a copy of the one that's being raised to the odd power is super powerful because once someone knows to do that, they become pretty much invincible for this type of problem. And once you do a couple of these on your own, if you're a student and you're watching this video, you got this. You'll be able to like destroy any problem like this. Here's another example. In this case, I purposely made sine the one that's being raised to the odd power. So we have sine of x to the fifth power times cosine of x squared. And again, power of sine is odd, so save a sine, let u be the other one, so in this case, cosine. So here we have sine to the fifth power, that's gonna turn into sine to the fourth power times sine. You see sine to the fourth times sine, because when you multiply these, you add the exponents, right? Sine to the first power times sine to the fourth power is sine to the fifth power. At this point, because we saved a sine, we're gonna let u be cosine. That means we gotta get rid of this guy. So sine squared is one minus cosine squared, so we did that here and that's squared. 
Then we make the substitution, boom, don't forget the negative, and then we just go from there and finish the problem. So I won't go through all the details, but that's the main idea, right? Whenever you have trig functions like this, powers of trig functions, sines and cosines, if one is being raised to an odd power, save a copy. And then here what I did was just another example to really make sure people got it, right? This time they're both, they're both odd, right? So which one do you do? Well, you could do either or. And the really interesting thing is, if you do this one, right? If you save a copy of cosine, you get this answer. But if you save a copy of sine, you get this answer. So it's like, whoa, what's happening there? But yeah, pretty cool. And they're both correct answers. Then I did another example. This time the argument of sine and cosine is not just x, it's 3x. So you get an extra three when you uh, take the derivative after your substitution because of the chain rule. Here's one where you have a sole even power and a 2x as the argument of sine. And so we use those identities that we saw before, these here, which are totally worth memorizing. So that's why, uh, you know, that's why they're useful, right? They're not just useful, you should memorize them, but they are useful, right? They are extremely useful, and they let you do a lot of mathematics that you can't really do uh, without them, right? So I'm not one of those people that's like for memorizing like every single identity in trig, but these are the ones you need to know, and with these, like, you can become pretty cool pretty awesome and pretty cool at calculus. This is an easier one here, save a power of cosine. Yeah, let's keep going. I think it gets harder. Yeah, it does. So after you deal with the sine and cosine stuff, you have to deal with uh, powers of secant and tangent. This is where it gets a little bit crazy. As you can see, my handwriting is pretty insane here. And so just recall tan squared plus one is secant squared. And then main derivatives, right? Derivative of tangent is secant squared. Derivative of secant is secant tangent. So with those things, if you follow these rules, you can become a monster. Let's go ahead and read these rules very carefully. Notice I wrote, maybe omit very special cases. Uh, I never omitted them. Um, I wrote them on the board every single time. I, I don't know why I put maybe omit in my notes, but that's the fun thing about going through these notes. You see things in the notes that um, I never wrote on the board ever. So if power of secant is even, save a secant squared. So I always memorize that, even secant, save a secant squared, even secant, save a secant squared. If the power of tangent is odd, save a secant tangent. Odd tangent, save a secant tangent, even secant, save a secant squared. And then if the power of tangent is even and there's no secant factors, save tan squared and then convert the rest to secants. Very special case. If the power of secant is odd and no tangents, use parts. That's like the integral of secant cubed. That actually has its own Wikipedia entry, so that's how famous that is. When all else fails, try converting to sines and cosines. So this is where it gets a little hectic. In this first example, we have multiple choices because we've got secant to the fourth power and tangent to the fifth power. So you've got an even secant so you can save a secant squared. You have an odd tangent so you can save a secant tangent. So I chose to save a secant squared. Secant squared times secant squared is secant to the fourth, right? We did that there. And then because we save a secant squared, u is gonna be tangent, right? So that's gonna be our u, u is gonna be tangent. So you need to convert secant squared to tangent by using this identity. Now everything here is tangent, so we can make our substitution, and then boom, we can finish from there, right? Really pro, really clean problem if you know the tricks, right? So like if you know the technique, you can do it. Now we think back, you know, when I was in Calc 2, I just refused to memorize stuff and it hurt me so much. So if you take anything away from this video, if you're still watching, memorize stuff sometimes, right? Like sometimes it's just worth memorizing stuff. It, it really is, it really is. Here's, a, here's one with an odd tangent. So in this case, we saved a secant tangent. That's pretty cool. All right, let's keep going. Tangent to the fourth. So here's one that's kind of annoying. This is one of those special cases, right? So you have tan squared, tan squared, uh, because that's the same thing as tangent to the fourth. I, so notice I skipped some steps here, right? I went from tangent to the fourth to this. That's because these are my notes, right? These aren't like meant for students. But tangent to the fourth is tan squared, tan squared. Tan squared is secant squared minus one. Then you distribute, and then you keep going, and you just keep applying the rules, and you integrate, right? Secant to the fourth, even secant, save a secant squared. That one's pretty straightforward. And then here we have that famous integral, the integral of secant cubed. This is the one where um, you have to use parts twice. I have a YouTube video for this problem. In fact, I have YouTube videos probably for all of these problems on my YouTube channel. And then over here, what's this? Uh, over here we have the really annoying ones. These are the ones that require really annoying to remember trig identities, like this one here. 
sine mx cosine nx is equal to this. Like most people don't memorize this, but if you're, if you're trying to integrate something like this, sine 5x cosine 4x, all you have to do is basically carefully apply this formula. So hopefully if you're taking calculus too, um, you're not forced to memorize these. Personally, I never, ever, ever, not even once required any of my students to memorize these identities because, I don't know, I mean, they do come up, they are important, and they come up in certain applications and stuff like that, but honestly, at the end of the day, people are going to memorize them and forget them. But when you memorize stuff like this, it comes up so much that you'll remember it forever. Anyway, it's just a really random video. I just wanted to make a video just to show you some of my notes. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more notes videos or notes for other classes or anything like that, leave a comment below. If you're interested in learning math, I actually do have a Calculus 2 course. Uh, check out my website, mathsorcerer.com. All the courses are currently on sale, and I think they're always on sale if you go through my website, but currently they are on sale. They're on Udemy, but if you buy them, please use my website, mathsorcerer.com. I also have a Patreon, Math Sorcerer. I'll put the link in the description. So check that out too if you feel like this video provided some value to your life. But yeah, Calculus 2. Why is it so hard? I don't know. It just really is. Look how many notes I have here. Tons. I have notes for multiple courses because I've taught for years and I've got some really advanced mathematics notes as well, as well as old qualifying exam questions and stuff. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, let me know. Until next time, good luck. Take care. Keep doing math.